Welcome back to the Tool Crib and the third installment of Building the Super Surge. So I've been working on the tools for this side and, and specifically I started out with the awl first. Now on this tool that's going to be going back into uh, the tool set for this side, all I did was uh, shape it down or, or sand it down with some 220 emery cloth. This one I have been working on for a number of hours. And while I didn't get any footage of what I did, and basically I was trying to figure out how I was going to do this because without having a surface grinder or even a belt sander, uh, I, I just had to come up with a way to do this. And this is what I came up with. So I started out by taking the tool and using a 2x4 and a hammer, I just made an indentation into this scrap piece of plywood. The reason I did that is because now I can work on it hands-free. I could set it in there and the plywood would actually catch it. So I started out grinding at first with really light passes. Uh, I did a couple passes at a time. I'd check it multiple different times. I made sure that I used a flap disc that was really worn down because I didn't want it grabbing or biting in too much at a time. I wanted a real smooth transition and uh, it worked out really, really well. I also ended up using this, this, uh, this block here. When I went to, into the sanding process, I was able to flip this around and use it against the emery cloth. I was able to get a lot of pressure on it by doing it that way, and it made the sanding a lot easier. So once I profiled it uh, to where I wanted it, I first went over the file probably about a uh, dozen different times just to knock off the high spots first. And then we went into 150 grit emery cloth and then on to 220 emery, emery, emery cloth. And it really worked out well. Now one thing about the surge, and this is true of, of uh, like the rebar, the super tool, the wave, all of them have this, uh, uh, it have a taper to them. So right behind the sewing eyelet here, it starts a taper that goes down to a, a little finer point at the end. Now I ended up taking that out. And the reason I did is because uh, what I did is I profiled it so they would have a taper from back to front complete. My thinking behind that is, is that when I reinstall this into the, into the surge, that because this side is thicker, it should eliminate the need for a washer on the near side where it's going to be up against the frame. I may still have to put a small washer in there. I don't know yet, but that was kind of my thought process. Now this one ended up working out pretty well. Uh, so I just profiled this side of the awl. On the other side, I just did a light sand of 220 and it really came out well. Now I did end up with a little tiny scratch mark that came from the grinder where I went just a touch deep, uh, but I was, I might still buff that out a little bit more. I ended up taking out about 15 to 20% of the material. So this all is quite a bit thinner than what it started out originally. And I think it's gonna work better actually. Now, the reason I have to do that is because to get the fourth tool in here, I have to, I have to take material out of all the three implements in order to accommodate it, plus those spacer washers that we're going to be using in it so that we get, uh, you know, just a good fit up. And I'm going to take this tool, this tool apart now because I need to measure each one of the individual implements and notate them as well as the spacer washers so that when we go back in and we start reprofiling all these tools, we get the right amount of spacers. We just get the, the, the total width uh, correct, including the spacer washers in every implement. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so now that I got this side of the tool apart, here's what we've got. We've got the first cap with the screw. We've got the little retractable uh, lanyard ring, which I think I'm just going to leave out when I put it back together. The all uh, are cutting tool the screwdriver, spacer washer, and then the other side, uh, the other cap. Now for the awl, now this may not be, I think I left out a washer when I put all this back together when I was doing this tool, uh, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to be adding in a, a couple of different washers on this side to make everything operate smoothly. I wanted to show you the work that I've done on this awl so far. And this may be a little tough to tell, but it's, it's about 15% thinner in profile now. And again, this all starts out, it has a small taper that starts in about right here and goes to the point. Now this one, like I mentioned before, 
goes a complete taper from the end to the point. So I eliminated the taper that came with it originally and made it a little, profiled it a little bit differently. And I think it's going to work out really well. Now again, I might have to do a little bit more sanding on this one to get out that little mark there that left by the grinder. It's very difficult to see, but uh, I might just touch it up yet. So let me get the calipers out here real quick so we could take a look and kind of see where we were at. If I can find them, here they are. So I just have kind of a cheap pair of, of uh, digital calipers. These are just general calipers, but uh, they do decent enough work for this. So I think we're down to 0.0775, I think, yeah. 0 0.0770. So that's where uh, the reprofiled one was. And it started out, uh, I believe this one started out at 0.0935. This one's showing at 0.0930. So I've taken out quite a, quite a bit of material, about 15%, but I think it's going to work out quite a bit better. Uh, that's where we're at so far. The next tool that I'm going to be working on is reprofiling this cutting tool. Uh, now we've also got the... Uh, the combination tool that's got to go on this side. So I'm going to take the measurements of the spatial washer and all the implements and then we're going to notate all those to make sure that when we go back in with everything that we get everything profiled correctly. And in the next video when we start doing this one I'll show you kind of how I went about uh, getting this uh, sanding block or grinding block uh, situation sorted out to, to really work well to be able to do this accurately with just hand tools, again, not having a surface grinder or a belt grinder. So it's starting to work out and it's really coming along really well. I'm pretty happy with how that all turned out. It took a lot of work. Again, I spent about six hours on it, but the results were worth it because once I got it, the majority of the material off, I was able to just hand sand it, fine tune it. And it, while it takes a long time, uh, the end results are definitely going to be worth it, I do believe. This is where we're at so far, and next video we're going to be working on this tool. My name is Ben. You've been watching the Texas Tool Crib. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next one.